Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today, we are going to be talking about Everfest, first edition. We're going to do a market update, see where the booster boxes are, and then see where the sealed, sorry, the single products are, and see if it's worth it for you to open up a box of Everfest. If you want access to all this stuff as a collection tracker, I do have a collection tracker on my Patreon at patreon.com slash kitchen table TCG. It is a great way for you to track the value of your collection. It does update automatically the prices update whenever I do a video like this uh, And it's just a great way for you to support the channel as well as get access to a collection tracker If you don't want to do patreon another way to support the channel is by shopping at minmaxgamesfab.com Which is a great place for you to pick up singles if you're looking for everfest I also have a tcg player affiliate link in the description of my videos And I have a website myself that doesn't do singles, but you can buy some sealed product there at Cavdane's market so Hopefully, we can get into this first edition stuff and see where things are at. Right now, Booster Box is sitting around $71. Honestly, um, I, I think this is going to be the biggest issue with Everfest and the biggest thing to consider if you're really looking at picking up singles or investing in Everfest is the amount of boxes still available, you know, even under map, but at map and the, the timelines that they are selling. Uh, you know, yesterday, this weekend was a big sale. You had uh, the TCG player kind of, uh, I think it was plus 8% back. And we still didn't hit that many boxes. Uh, it's just the volume of sales on Everfest is just not very significant on TCG player. So these box prices being so low kind of just keeps the card prices down, to be honest. It's just hard to buy, do a buyout on cards if there's so many boxes available and if the demand for those boxes is just not that that big so uh yeah anyway boxes still sitting you can get them reliable seller has you know lots of sales 100 percent at about 71 dollars after shipping fees you're paying more but we're just tracking the price especially if you're able to buy six you're only paying two dollars shipping so anyway uh that's kind of where the prices are on those we've been up and down uh map pricing is at 77 that's really where i uh, will we'll end up after a couple days but uh, sitting around 75 77 dollars. You can see some other sold listings there at 73 anyway So uh, first edition boxes sitting about there. Let's see if it's, is it worth it to open up a box Is the EV going to be there if you open up a box right now the grandeur of Ahala sitting at 260 um, Sitting at 260 you can see uh, two copies available right now at 260 and then it hops right back up to that 270 but this week uh, there were also two copies purchased at 260 this weekend again the the demand for this the uh the amount of sold listings it's just not considerably large uh but you know we'll see if it picks up as those boxes kind of start getting bought out uh maybe if people start seeing those boxes go away they'll start picking up the singles but looking at your legendaries the leg might uh, sitting about $69, your silver palm sitting about 40 and your skull cap sitting at 103. Obviously these are down just a little bit. Again, uh, taking a look at volume sold and volume available. Uh, you, you don't have that much available at under 75. You have two copies of, uh, the, the bastion of Eisenloft under 75. And then you've got quite a few at that $75 price point. Uh, and looking at the sales history, you sell about one of these a day. Uh, is about what the market does occasionally two or three, but then you have an a occasional time where you don't see any sales for four days. So interesting to see the volume on this stuff and to kind of track that and take a look at that. That, in my opinion, is way more important. I know we talk about the sale prices, but that is the volume is way more important than the sale prices, in my opinion. Silver Palm, same thing, tons of copies uh, under that $45 price point. And then if you take a look at sold listings, uh, this one is definitely being targeted by a couple people. I've heard a couple YouTube videos talking about them. Uh, you've got, you know, five purchased on the 29th and then uh, three purchased on the 28th. You know, this person bought two of them and then you have one purchase and then you have days where they don't sell. So this tells me that there's some buyouts going on. This is a, a great buyout target. Honestly, I, I completely agree that this is a good buyout target because this should be pretty good in PVE if PVE is successful. And if they do not reprint this for PVE in like a non-foil, this card would be very, very valuable in my opinion. So not very, very, but you can see this go up to 80 bucks, I think. So anyway, skull cap, uh, very, very kind of flat at that 103. Uh, lots of copies available at that price point as well. 
All right. Well, that is all the legendaries. You're at an average price of $71, which is down 3% on your legendaries. Moving over to the regular cold foils. Uh, some ups and some downs. Kraken's Aethervine, definitely one I wanted to chat about. This is a card that was purchased and bought up like crazy a couple weeks ago as we saw that uh, Islander was going to be a hero in Uprising. Uh, and so a lot of people picked up this card. It jumped up, if you take a look at the market here, it jumped up to, I think, $45, $41, uh, way back from $15 on the 18th to the 25th. It jumped up to 41 and now we're kind of getting closer. We're back to $27 uh, on what it was. So it went from 15 to 27, which is still very, very good. But the market having a hard time keeping it up in that price point. Uh, it looks like this, if, if, if they continue to sell, it looks like it may end at around $33. So there's a pretty high ceiling at $33 with a lot of copies there. There's not a ton of copies over 30. But it, what really the interesting thing is if boxes keep getting open and if this demand isn't fully there, if in other words, if um, if people don't actually play this with Islander and that demand's not there, I do think you could see this card go uh, much you know back down to that fifteen dollar twenty dollar price point if people don't actually end up playing Islander. Maybe Islander gets a better weapon in Uprising or something like that. So definitely a lot of ups and downs and a lot of speculation going into that card. It'll be really interesting to watch that to see if that plays out for those who are speculating on Kraken's Aether Beam. Uh, other than that, you've got Skull Crushers, which is down a little bit. Uh, Arcane Lantern down a little bit, down to 24 from 30. And then your talismans and your potions. Now, there was some hype about these at the Pro Tour where James White said that the community hadn't really figured out how to use them yet. Uh, and then they got kind of bought out. And then now you're seeing some slight retracements on some of these, particularly like Potion of Deja Vu jumped up to almost $20. Now it's down to $15. Uh, you've got talisman of uh, tithes that you know jumped up to about $7 or $8 outside to 6 So. A little bit of a down tick, but nothing major. Uh, these are kind of sitting pretty steady based on that new information. You've got Amulet of Oblation is up 23% to $5. Potion of Seeing up 17%. So, uh, put Talisman of Cremation up 17% too. So, definitely some interesting stuff to take a look at. All in all, though, uh, as we take a look at these numbers, uh, we are uh, down a, a bit, uh, down 6% here. Uh, which is not not horrible, but your average price for these cold foils is fourteen dollars and thirty nine cents. The rare average is seven dollars and sixty two cents, and the majestic average is twenty eight dollars and sixty seven cents. So down kind of across the board, but not majorly. Although this is two weeks down in a row off of a two week previous up period. Let's see if it was actually longer. Yeah, two weeks up and then two weeks down. Extended arts, uh, nothing really to to chat about. These extended arts are interesting. Some of them are going to be more expensive, obviously, than, you know, the ones that see play. Your your majestic one's having a hard time this week, though. Pulverize, um, let's see, Pulverize sitting uh, at the same price as it's been, but 100 Winds is down 13%. Sorry, Winds of Eternity is down 3%. Uh, Aether Wildfire down a little bit, down 6.5%. And, and uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's about it. Knickknack's actually up. But a little bit of softness in some of these, but then the rares are the ones that are showing the more softness. So down 5% this week, all in all, at $16.80 on average. And so this is going to add about $8 into the EV of your box because it, it seems to be about one in every other box gets an extended art. Now it's going to add about $8 to the EV, but you have a much better chance at hitting a card that is significantly lower than $8. It's very spiky. You've got some cards that are sitting in $100 and then the majority of cards at like two or three bucks. So definitely an interesting thing uh, as you take a look at the EV. Looking at your Majestic Rainbow Foils, you're up 6% this week. Uh, a couple of ones that are interesting. Uh, a couple of ones that are interesting. You got Spring Tidings up 16% and Swing Big up 5%. Rain Razors up 15%. Uh, I'm going to actually go double check this knickknack brick or That one doesn't look super accurate up 550%, but let's take a look at it together and just run it live. Uh, I think I may have made a mistake here. Nick knack brick a brack. I may have made a mistake here. Looking at the rainbow foil. 
Vanessa just got bought out recently. Oh, yeah. Nine bucks. Sold listings at... So this is where we'll see. This is what we do for all the cards. Uh, Rainbow Foil, first edition. All right, sold listings at $4. Looks like there was one sold last week at 10 So we'll change this to about $5 on average there. Uh, you get a couple of sold listings, six fifty, and then uh, four dollars. We'll put that at five dollars, and see how that changes things up. Yeah, we're not up eight percent; we are up three percent overall. Uh, so yeah, knickknack, brick rack. Um, sorry, now that's right. Uh, so yeah, up three percent. Um, yeah, all in all, in the rainbow foils, we're up a little bit, not terribly, but you did have a buyout on knickknack, brick rack, which is cool. Um, that's fun. I like that card. It's uh, the artwork super cool. Um, all right, continuing on here as we go through this valley, regular majestics. Uh, not a lot of changes, honestly. Nothing really moving. Uh, miraging, miraging metamorph up nine percent. You got some people building some stuff, but really right now, I really feel like people are not building decks. I feel like there's a, a kind of a lull period. We're up three percent to two dollars and forty-seven cents. There's kind of a lull period where this next set is on the horizon and why build a deck now seems to be the attitude of a lot of people I talk to, which makes sense. So rare rainbow foil, no huge changes, regular rares, no changes. Um, all right, let's hop into your EV calculation here. So all in all, you can see how we calculate this out. One rare every box, one rare cold foil every box, one foil majestic, cold foil majestic every 2.8 boxes. You get seven majestics, 1.25 foil majestics. You get some rares, some foils. This is the pull rate for the legendaries and the fable. And then you got those extended arts. So your box EV, if you include everything, is sitting at $85. If you only include the majestics through the fable and the extended arts, you're sitting at $81.55. If you don't include the rares or the fable, uh, you're sitting, so this is like if you open up 10 boxes, so you do hit a legendary. You're hitting, sitting at $75 per box. And then if you just get a cold foil rare, not any cold foil majestics or anything like that, but if you just get a box that just has a cold foil rare and then you just sell the majestics, you're sitting at $40.10. So all in all, this price right here seems to be about, you know, even with the box price. It'd be really interesting to see, again, if those boxes dry up, do you see more singles come to the market? Or is that now time to buy? Sorry, I'm exhausted. Is that now time to buy the product as if the, you know, the boxes are going to take a, not, a, a lot longer to go. They're not going to go away tomorrow. But once they do go, now you don't have some more supply coming to the market in the singles and then the singles can go up. So it will be interesting to see where we land on that. All in all, that is your EV for Uprising or for um, Everfest. Again, if you want access to all this as a collection tracker, head on over to patreon.com slash kitchen table TCG. I also get yourself access to a discount code over at minmaxgamesfab.com and you can also use my TCG player affiliate link in the comment section or in the description of the video. So hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.